Muli maraming salamat po kay Congressman Barry Gutierrez at uh, ganoon din ho kay Ginoong Mar Rojas. Okay? Maganda ho no na natalakay natin ang mga bagay-bagay at yung uh, usapin ng community-based preparedness. Ano ho? At syempre natukoy rin ho kanina yung mga paggawa ng mga pulisiya at saka yung mga pano kalang batas para ho lalo pang paigdingin yung tinatawag natin community-based preparedness. Ngayon bago ho tayo magpatuloy sa atin hong uh, Uh, susunod na mga kandidato o pagbasa ng mga statement ng mga susunod pang kandidato, uh, panuorin ho muna natin itong isa hong maikling video patungkol ho sa Project Agos. Glenda, known internationally as Ramasun, intensifies as it moves closer to the Bicol Summer Area 2. Ayan, siguro ho, tawagin natin si Ginoong Sakyuzon para ho bigyan tayo ng uh, mas komprehensibo at uh, pagpapaliwanag tungkol ho dito sa Project Agos kung ano nga ba ito, sir. Hey, salamat, Venus. Uh, ang napanood po ninyo ay isang video uh, tungkol sa Project Agos. Yan po ay project po ng Rappler and MoPH. Uh, MoPH po yung parang advocacy arm po ng Rappler. Uh, kung nakita nyo po doon, may mga picture na lumalabas, may mga text na lumalabas. Yan po ay mga teksto galing po sa iba't ibang mga may cellphone. Yung mga nagre-report. Halimbawa, may bagyo po, tapos biglang nagbaha. ba diba? Usually, ang ginag ginagawa po natin, tinitext yung mga kaibigan natin, pinapaalam natin sa barangay captain, dito nagbabaha, dito po ay kailangan natin mag-evacuate. Yan po, kinukuha po natin ng Project Agos at nilalagay po natin sa isang map para makita po ng mga disaster responders kung saan po nakakailangan ng tulong kaagad. At ginagamit po natin yung SMS, yung social media, yung cellphone, yung gumagamit po kayo ng Facebook or ng Twitter, at inalabas po natin yan sa mapa kaagad. Ginamit po yung Project Agos, actually kahit noon pa, bago po ng Typhoon Yolanda, at nung isang beses po ginamit yung Project Agos para makatulong sa isang nanay na malapit na pong mga anak, nasa barangay Tatalon po siya sa QC, tapos, wala po siyang cellphone, although may organizer po na taga Gabriela, nandun po sa barangay Tatalon, tinex niya yung kasama niya, yung kasama naman niya, may Twitter, may internet, nilagay po niya sa Twitter, at sa pamamagitan po ng internet at ng social media, na-alert po ang Red Cross, na-alert po ang Quezon City Rescue Team, at nagpadala po sila ng rescue boat at rescue team para tanggalin po sila at dalin, dalin sa ospital. At doon po siya nanganak. So, nanganak po yung, yung nanay, Pinangalan niya yung baby na, baby Yesha. Bakit Yesha daw? Yes, nakaraos na siya ng Typhoon Mario. At ito po yung sinasabi po ni Steph kanina na bagong normal. Hindi na po kailangan natin gawin yung dati natin ginagawa. Tama po ba? Dahil pag ginagawa po natin yung ginagawa natin dati na hindi tayo naghahanda, hindi tayo nagpaplano, eh talagang tigok yung maabutan natin. But, Because may cellphone na po tayo, meron na po tayong free Facebook at iba't ibang paraan para malaman po ang impormasyon. Ngayon, kahit sino po tayo, kahit mayaman, mahirap, dapat makialam, dapat alamin kung anong dapat gawin. At syempre, hindi lang po dapat itago yung, yung knowledge, no? hindi dapat pwedeng itago lang sa ating utak. 
dapat ikalat po natin sa iba't ibang pamamaraan kung anong dapat pong gawin bago dumating ang sakuna, bago dumating ang bagyo, habang may bagyo at pagkatapos po ng bagyo. Kasi kung sabi, sabi po ni Dr. Nenelin at pati na rin si Congressman Barry, kapag hindi po tayo nagtutulungan, wala po tayong sense of community, wala po tayong pakikiisa, talagang mangyayari po at mangyayari po yung nangyari sa Typhoon Yolanda. At dito po tayo, nakatera siguro tayo sa syudad, no? mas lalo po tayong damay. Kasi pag may nangyari po sa Malabon, may nangyari po sa Makati, damay po tayo lahat, lalo na pag earthquake. So, sana po gamitin po natin ang mga tools tulad ng Twitter, Facebook, at social media para ikalat po ang impormasyon na dapat alamin natin tuwing may pagyo at may sakuna. Maraming pong salamat. Uh, mamaya, pwede nyo akong lapitan if you want to know more about Project Agos. Thank you very much. Salamat. I'd like to call on my co-host, si Steph. Ang uh, susunod po na ating uh, tatawagin ay ang... Wala na daw kasi sudito na lang daw tayo sa Gidlaza. Oh, 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 oh. Close na tayo. <laughs> oh, close alright, na tayo alright. kasi marami tayong um, baka pwede nating pag-usapin din mamaya kung ano ba yung narinig natin, mm -hmm. di ba? Sige, pero may susunod pa tayong... Um, okay, go ahead. Sige. Well, babasahin ko rin yung profile ni mm -hmm. Senator Grace Poe. Okay? Senator Grace Poe made Philippine election history when she garnered a record-breaking 20 million 337,327 votes um, noong nakaraang na 2013 senatorial elections. She took up AB Development Studies at the University of the Philippines where she was a college scholar and batch representative to the UP Student Council. Before transferring to Boston College, ito po ay nasa Massachusetts sa US, where she earned her AB Political Science degree. Isa lang daw siya sa tatlong um, Filipinos to be chosen as a fellow at the Lee Kuan Yew Policy Center at the National University sa Singapore. Prior to the Senate, Senator Grace Poe headed the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, or yung MTRC Binga. Um, in her first year of office, she racked up an impressive list of accomplishments in the Senate. She already has two laws under her belt. Ito yung Republic Act 10639, or the Free Mobile Texts During Disasters Act and Republic Act 10640, which streamlines the three witness rule of the Dangerous uh, Drug Act. She likewise spearheaded passage of the FOI bill in the Senate. To date, she has authored more than 190 measures, the most notable of which are the Sustansya sa Batang Pilipino Act, Corporate Farming Act, and the Tulong sa Kabataan sa Agricultura. Yun. So that was the profile that um, her office has given us. Okay. At uh, unfortunately, wala po si Senator Grace po dito, but she is represented by her chief of staff. So I'd like to call on stage, tawagin po natin si Attorney Jing Mendoza, ang kinatawan ng Senator Grace po upang basahin ang pahayag ng kanyang, pined na kanyang pinedala. Palakpakan, palakpakan po natin si Attorney Bautista. Mendoza. Magandang hapon po. Hindi po ako ang Chief of Staff ni Senator po bagamat uh, kasama po ako sa kanyang opisina. So, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Though Senator Grace Po cannot be with us today, she wants to share her thoughts and policy recommendations on the topic of disaster risk reduction and management. Please allow me to read this message on her behalf. Thank you to DRRNet Philippines, Comelec, Surge, Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection, UNICEF, Accord, CDP, CDRC, Oxfam, World Vision, Bilang Filipino, TV5, Caritas Manila, CBCP, NASA, Child Fund, Christian Aid, Coastal Corps, CSWCD, Handicap International, NCCP, UPNCPAG, UP Pulse, PDRF, Plan International, Rappler, and Radio Veritas for bringing all stakeholders together in one forum to discuss climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. 
I believe it is high time that we made this a priority of our government. In 2009, Metro Manila reeled from the effects of Ondoy when continuous rainfall inundated cities and claimed 747 lives. In 2011 and 2012, Typhoon Sendong and Pablo caused massive flooding and landslides in Mindanao, an area that is not typically in the path of typhoons. In 2013, the strongest tropical cyclone ever recorded to make landfall hit Visayas and parts of Luzon, resulting in the loss of 6,300 lives, affecting more than 16 million Filipinos and causing about 93 billion in economic loss across five regions. The succession of disasters that have destructive impacts have made us realize that these are now, in fact, the new normal, and that we should build on the lessons that these experiences have taught us in order to make our communities become more adaptive and resilient to disasters and to the effects of climate change. The most important question that we face now is how? How do we counter the impacts of climate change? How do we best achieve zero casualty and reduce economic loss in times of disaster? So here are our policy recommendations. First, on adaptation. In 2012, Republic Act Number no. 10174 was passed, creating the People's Survival Fund, amounting to one billion for long-term finance stream. The PSF was in intended to accelerate government efforts towards mitigating the effects of climate change and reducing disaster risk. The fund also aimed to empower local governments and communities who are in the best position to identify the hazards that they are exposed to and to formulate solutions to address them. In 28 October 2015, the Climate Change Commission called upon LGUs and local organizations to submit proposals on climate change adaptation activities in order to, to access the PSF. We hope that the one billion fund will be optimized by the LGUs and local organizations in coming up with climate change adaptation measures that are grounded on the particular hazards that the community is exposed to and mainstreaming climate change adaptation in local development plans and policies. Next on mitigation. Disaster mitigation means taking a more proactive approach in reducing the impacts and risks of disasters. One way to achieve this is by fully maximizing the use of science and technology to identify disaster risks, determine the appropriate action necessary to lessen the impacts of disasters, and integrate these actions into programs and plans that aim to reduce casualties and losses as opposed to having a merely reactive response. Project NOAA under the DOST has begun flood inundation and hazard mapping for the country's flood-prone and major river systems, while DENR already has existing geohazard maps. These maps should be made available to local governments to be integrated in their disaster manage management plans. We will also push for the modernization of PAGASA, PILVOX, and PNRI, because as the second most disaster-prone country in the world, we have to harness technologies that will provide accurate and reliable data that will serve as the basis for better and improved programming in mitigating the effects of disaster. The cost of investing in technologies will far outweigh the economic costs of disasters. Next, on preparedness. We Filipinos have often relied on our resilience when it comes to disasters, as our ability to bounce back have shown the strength of the Filipino spirit time and again. However, we must not rely on resilience alone especially now that the effects of climate change have resulted to more disasters that have become increasingly destructive. Considering that this is our new normal, we have to focus on our preparedness for these situations. 
Disaster support facilities must be mapped out. Safe areas for post-disaster constructions must be identified. Citizens must participate in consultations for disaster planning at the local level. CCADRR strategies must be integrated in their comprehensive land use plans. And a national land use plan that considers all these factors must be enacted. By increasing the awareness of the people in disaster hazards that they are exposed to, strengthening their capacity to anticipate and respond to these hazards, and integrating disaster plans at the local and national levels, we empower LGUs and communities to prepare for disasters. An important consideration that must be included in disaster plans is the protection of human rights during times of emergency. Since reports have shown that after Yolanda occurred in 2013, women and children have been victims of trafficking and prostitution in disaster-stricken areas. The Operational Guidelines on Human Rights and Natural Disasters, published by the Interagency Standing Committee, United Nations Primary Mechanism for Humanitarian Coordination, has already captured how the government can be responsive without infringing human rights. We push that this document be customized to the needs of the community. Marginalized sectors such as women, children, the elderly, persons with disabilities, etc., are more vulnerable during times of disasters. And so DRRM plans and practices must be inclusive and address the health, social, and economic needs of these sectors before, during, and after disasters. Evacuation centers, for instance, must be accessible to PWDs, and emergency kits must include items for women's hygiene. Consultations must be made with these vulnerable sectors in order to take their specific needs into account in crafting disaster management plans. Furthermore, we recommend the passage of special laws such as the Children's Emergency Relief and Protection Act, currently Senate Bill Number 2446, which aims to protect children during times of disasters. And of course, on the issue of response, the litmus test of the effectiveness of disaster mitigation and preparedness plans is how well these are executed during times of actual disasters with zero casualties and minimal economic loss as indicators. Early warning systems must work. Individuals must know when and where to evacuate. Temporary shelters with basic services must be available. The government must be able to bring relief food to evacuation centers. In our past experiences, the government has been criticized for the delay in, ex in extending assistance to affected communities. It is important that during disasters, government presence must be visible, beginning with local governments, which are the frontliners in disaster response. Government assistance must be delivered swiftly and efficiently and must reach even those in poor and far-flung areas. On rehabilitation, the NHA claims that there have been delays in scouting safe areas for suitable resettlement, which was compounded by the lack of raw materials needed for construction. Both NEDA and NHA lament that existing national laws and policies have hindered the acceleration of the, health of the rehabilitation process. The challenge of securing clearances and permits to construct plus the tedious bidding process, which requires complex documentation, all contributed in slowing down the process. Accelerating rehabilitation without sacrificing quality is key in bringing back normalcy to the lives of those affected by the disaster. We know that LGUs have important roles in searching for durable solutions and these LGUs must foster partnerships with affected families through public consultations so that communities will have ownership over government projects. This way, 
they are not just beneficiaries, but partners in government projects. On the issue of transparency, it must be ensured that there is transparency and openness in all government efforts, in all phases of managing disasters. Most importantly, on the distribution of relief, utilization of funds, and management of foreign and local aid. We will ensure that all efforts and resources are properly monitored and accounted for through online platforms, geographic information systems, and monitoring systems that are completely accessible to the public. These systems and information hub shall help local governments, non-government organizations, and even individual donors to optimize their activities and resources. We will also empower the Commission on Audit to undertake the accounting of humanitarian aid management and distribution of relief goods by expanding its mandate. With this, the Commission on Human Rights can also work with the Commission on Audit in ensuring efficiency and protection of human rights in times of disasters. Of course, we call for a disaster management agency. We believe in consider, consider, consolidating our government approach towards managing disasters. In the past, we have seen cooperation and coordination problems stalling the, stalling the supposedly swift and immediate government action to help affected communities. This is an innate feature of the system which dwells heavily on coordination, in which a failure of one part may cause a slowdown or halt of the entire system. To address this, we believe in establishing an independent disaster management agency, which shall serve as the lead in implementing, coordinating, and managing disaster mitigation, preparation, response, and rehabilitation projects. The disaster management agency shall serve as the quick response team in times of disasters. It shall be the lead in disaster planning, prepositioning of disaster aid, and implementation of emergency management procedures. We aim for a unified government approach to ensure swift, effective, and efficient government action to make communities resilient, prepared, and adaptive to climate change and disasters it causes. Typhoons, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other disasters will inevitably happen. And when they do happen, we should be ready. We are all affected by disasters. Hindi namimili ng biktima ang mga kalamidad. Disasters do not discriminate. But disasters will not take lives and destroy properties if we are able to prepare for it, if we are able to anticipate it. Managing the impacts of climate change and disasters is a collective effort of the government, civil society, and the communities themselves, which is why forums such as this one that bring together stakeholders from different sectors are very important. It brings the issue to the fore where meaningful discussions can be made, where best practices can be shared, and where new strategies may arise. Whether as part of government or civil society or as private citizens, we all have roles and responsibilities in disaster management. And we owe it to our community, to our country, and to each other to perform them. We hope that in the future, we may never need to build back again because we have already built the best, because we worked together, because we prepared well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Mendoza. I think I promoted you. Pasensya na po. Maraming maraming salamat din po kay Senadora Grace Po. Yes. Thank you very much for that statement. I hope uh, all these statements will be released uh, to the public uh, mm -hmm. so that you can read and then share it with your communities. No? So,